Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the session on SAP CAP for ABAPERS. Uh, so we will be focusing on folks who are new to SAP CAP. Uh, so we are in step six. Uh, so if you check out the branch six underscore orders, uh, so this will give you the completed version of step six. Uh, in the previous sessions, uh, we had uh, uh, populated the S4 customer ID. Uh, and in this session, what we want to do is uh, we also want to populate the orders. And these are the main steps uh, that we want to accomplish. Uh, so we want to be able to handle uh, all these uh, three requests. Uh, so let's, uh, before we jump in, uh, I do want to talk about the async and await and how you can work that with promises. Uh, this is not something that we are going to be doing in uh, our application today, uh, but this is uh, good to know. Uh, so let's say you have a long running operation right here and let's say you want to do this uh, sequentially uh, so what I mean by that is uh, you want to run this long running operation and uh, and the second line uh, is dependent on the first line so uh, once this completes uh, only then you want to go to the next line because uh, let's say whatever is get getting returned from this, uh, you need to use it in the next line. Uh, so you would use a, a syntax something like this. Uh, so in this case, uh, the control is going to wait until this completes, uh, and then it's going to go to the next line, and then it's uh, going to complete this, and then it's going to go to this line. Um, now, there may be times when uh, you don't need, like these two operations can be run independently of each other. Uh, so in that case, uh, what you you can do is uh, what you can do is um, uh, you can use the promise dot all and uh, uh, trigger both of them at the same time uh, because uh, they are independent operations. Uh, so in this case, uh, as soon um, once both of them gets completed, uh, then the control goes to the next line. Uh, so the advantage here is uh, since they are both running at the same time, uh, you minimize on the amount of time required. Uh, now there are also other options. I, we just looked at promise.all, there is also promise.any. Uh, in this case, uh, you kickstart both these uh, remote API operations, uh, remote operations uh, uh, at the same time. Uh, but as soon as uh, one of them completes successfully, uh, the control goes to the next line. Um, and then you have promise.race, uh, where you kickstart uh, uh, this uh, asynchronous operation uh, at the same time. Uh, but as soon as uh, one of them completes, uh, whether it's successful or failed, uh, that doesn't matter. As soon as one completes, uh, control goes to the next line. Uh, Promise.all settled is uh, same thing. Uh, as soon as all of them completes, uh, whether it's a failure or successful, it doesn't matter. Uh, control goes to the next line. Uh, so you can use this in your uh, application uh, if uh, there is a requirement for this. Uh, let's quickly have a look at the UI. Uh, so the UI looks something like this in our application. So the very first page, when we go to this very first page, uh, we have a list of all the customers. And at this time, I don't need to show the offers. Uh, so the request looks uh, something like this, uh, slash customers. And because uh, getting the offers is a expensive operation, I don't want to get the offers at this moment. Uh, so I just want to just read the Northwind customers and uh, send the response back. Uh, so this is our local customers table. We are going to use this as a pass through. Uh, we are going to do a read, uh, but we are only going to read all the fields from Northwind customers and send the response back. And this is a fairly straightforward uh, we have seen this before. Uh, so in my service.js file, I'm making sure that there is no customer ID. Uh, so right now, so I know that the um, that the request is only for customers. So I'm doing a get customers. And in get customers, uh, you can see that I'm reading everything from Northwind uh, customers and then sending the customers back. Uh, so this is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, we have seen this. So uh, if I go back to my um, UI again, uh, so now when I select a row, now if this was a V2 application, OData V2 application, uh, then what it's going to do is it's going to do uh, the customers, uh, it's going to have a primary key, and then it's going to do a dollar expand, and it's going to get the customer orders. Uh, so the uh, request is going to be something like this. Uh, so we do need to uh, handle this if you are going to use a V2 service. Uh, so here again, uh, I am 
reading the customer's local table, but this is just going to be a pass through. Uh, so I'm going to do the custom read handler myself. And here I'm not going to read all the customers. Uh, there is no reason for me to read all the customers because I only want this uh, uh, one particular customer with this primary key. So I'm just going to read this one customer uh, with this primary key. Uh, once I read this customer with the primary key, I'm going to populate the S4 customer ID. Uh, we have seen this in the previous session. Uh, so now I have the custom, all the fields from Northwind customers. I also have the S4 customer ID from our mapping table. Now all I have to do is uh, get the offers. Uh, so let's see how we can get the offers. Uh, so here uh, I'm going to get the offers right here. And here what I'm going to do is uh, we have seen the syntax before. Uh, here is the select from and here I'm going to do the select from sales orders. Uh, but the key thing is uh, I'm passing in this where clause. Uh, so I'm going to get only the sales orders uh, for that particular customer. And uh, these are the fields that I want. And then I'm passing in the API key. And then um, in my customers uh, for this uh, field, uh, this is the field that I wanted to populate. I'm going to uh, add this orders that I just read. Uh, and then I'm going to return this customer. Uh, so if I run this, it's going to look something like this. Uh, so let me go ahead and run this CDS watch. Uh, so here I have the request, uh, which is uh, customers uh, expand equals orders. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Uh, so this is uh, going to go ahead, expand on the orders. And here, sure enough, uh, I have my customer. And just for that customer, I'm going to be able to read the sales orders. OK, so so we know how to do this as well. Uh, so the last thing uh, is if I'm going to use a OData v4 uh, in my application, uh, and that's what I'm going to be doing, uh, then the request is something like this, uh, slash customers, uh, then the primary key slash orders. Uh, so in this case, uh, the read that I want to target uh, is the S4 sales orders, because that's the one that I'm reading. Uh, and uh, what I want to do uh, is I want to just get this uh, primary primary key uh, from the query itself. Uh, so I'm just uh, getting it from the query itself. So no, I'm not making a call to the uh, remote uh, Northwind database or anything. I'm just getting this ALFKI from this uh, query itself. And then from this, uh, I can go to the mapping table and get the corresponding S4 customer ID. So now I have the S4 customer ID. And uh, we already saw the select statement how you can do it. Uh, so I'm going to do a select. Uh, and uh, based on that select statement, I'm going to pass in the S4 customer ID in the where clause uh, and just get the orders. Uh, so so if I go back, uh, so it will look something like this. So in my service.js file, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, if I close all these things, uh, in my service.js file, now I have to target the S4 custom sales orders. Uh, so I have the S4 sales orders. And you can see that from the query itself, I'm getting the customer ID. And if there is a customer ID, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm getting the S4 or customer, uh, uh, I'm getting the S4 customer ID and I'm going to make a call to the remote API to read uh, S4 sales orders. And from there, uh, then what I can do is I can go ahead and make a call to the uh, customers uh, by passing in the slash orders. I have uh, the customers and the orders. Uh, so in this case, I'm not going to get any customer information at all, uh, just the order information, but the order information for this particular uh, customer. Uh, so if I run this, uh, you can see I'm getting the order information, uh, but I'm not getting any customer information uh, because uh, that's not what, uh, uh, so this is uh, just reading the orders, uh, but for this particular customer. OK, uh, so with that, uh, we can use this in our UI in the next session. So in the next session, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to build the UI, uh, but uh, we have all the OData services available in place uh, for us to build our application. OK, see you in the next session.